It's 6.30. We'll call a virtual planning board meeting to order. And before we go any further, we've got a few formalities we've got to take care of. Um, any vote will be automatically, because of this uh, conditions we're in, we need to do every vote, every vote by a roll call vote. So I'll we'll call your name and then you'll be able to vote whether you're yay or nay. And we need to, Bill's got a few motions that he wants to make to make signing of documents a lot easier, I guess, for lack of any other term. Basically, you know, instead of going around getting a majority of signatures, we'll vote at the meeting and then um, one of us can sign the plan after the fact just for recording purposes to make it simple. So the person, so whoever's requesting a signature or whatever they're requesting doesn't need to run around to uh, a bunch of different members and try to get the, the uh, more than one signature. You ready, Bill? Yeah. So I'm going to make a motion to. Uh, I just got to print this out. My printer is going to roar in a minute. So I'm going to make a motion to adopt uh, the provisions of chapter 41, section 81P of the general laws, that's the subdivision control law, which reads in part, the planning board of a city or town, which has authorized any person other than a majority of the board to endorse on a plan, the approval of the board, or to make any other certificate of the subdivision control law shall transmit a written statement to that effect to the register of deeds signed by a majority of the board, giving the name of the person so authorized. So what I was proposing was that we would authorize Jim, Joseph Grodnick and myself as the three longest serving members of the planning board. Any one of us can sign a document which has been approved previously by a majority of the board. Second. And that's for the duration of this quarantine that we're under, right? Plus 45 days, right? Well, it 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 is not, this is not an emergency law. This is something that's on the books. Okay. So uh, I think it'll just remain in the, well, we could, we could put a 45 day limit on it, or we could just re let it remain in effect until we, re until we reverse it. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the, as long as the board votes to pass it, I don't see it's a big deal to only have one signature on stuff because we're still all voting as a majority to approve it or disapprove it. Jim, if you can recall, when I was, the, I was authorized as one individual to sign it. And I was authorized because I was always in my office, so it was easy to get and sign it. Yeah. And uh, then when you came aboard, you kind of didn't want that. Uh, now that you know everything, well, but, I, I, I think it's appropriate for the time. Yeah. But of course, they were bothering you at your place of business all the time and kind of being a nuisance at times, too. And we weren't always voting on passing everything, so sometimes you would get put between a rock and a hard spot to be, almost to be repressed to sign something, you were not a percent sure. So I think this is a little bit different and probably a bit more straightforward. That we're all I gonna agree. vote to, I agree. We're all gonna vote to approve it. It's a matter of, a, of a, the signature is almost a formality after the fact. I mean, if, we, if we're all together once again and we vote to approve something, you know, whether it's one signature or five is going to be irrelevant because we're all right there. This is just unique, a unique circumstance. So anyways, I think it's a good idea. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Mr. Sardinsky? Aye. Mr. Dwyer? Aye. Mr. Zagrodnik? Aye. And Mark is not here, so we've got four to zero with one absent. Motion passes. OK. We want to do this. That that'll cover subdivision controls and paying of invoices, Bill. Uh, the, it, the statutory one is just for 
subdivision control. Section 81P is just subdivision control. Okay. But, um, I can make another motion uh, to delegate chair or clerk to sign approved bills. Okay. Same thing, so same thing applies. Majority approves it <coughs> in one of these meetings, and then one of the two of us will sign it. And that will probably, we could easily put a 45 day after the, yeah. Until okay. 45 days after emergency. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Josie. Josie, second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Mr. Zarzinski? Aye. Mr. Dwyer? Yeah, aye. And Mr. Zagrodnik? Aye. Very good. That's all the minor stuff we're going to take care of to get going, right, right, Bill? Yes, that's fine. Now we can take care of um, Ms. Burkew. You're up. Hi. Hi. So I'm just looking to have a release of Lot 16 Crystal Lane. Um, I have a map right here. Yep. You can see it. So the ones circled are the ones that have not been released yet. And we're looking to have Lot 16 released, which is right up here. So just lot 16? Just lot 16, yeah. Okay. Randy's going to come in about the, uh, the, the the land on the other lots. Are you aware of what he's doing with that? No. I believe it's lot 16. He's going to take off um, that long piece yeah. of land, the frontage. Okay. And on lot Lot one, I guess they're going to take off also all that land frontage. Okay. Where's that going to, what's going to happen to that? Do you, are you, you must, do you know? I assume that my dad's just going to retain that. Okay. Yeah, because that's like the common space. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, lot 16 is the only lot we're asking for release. Okay. Entertain a motion to, I mean, I'll make a motion to release lot 16 from, uh, uh, the subdivision for request. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Mr. Sars? Aye. Mr. Dwyer? Aye. Mr. Zagradnik? Aye. And Mr. Mark is still absent. So it's four zero one. Yeah, four zero one absent. Motion approved. You can go to see any one of the three of us, Nicole, whenever you get a chance to sign it. Okay. All right. So I'll probably email you, Mr. Dwyer. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So I'm okay. working from home presently, but uh, but you're close either way. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the one thing we just want to be careful about, I don't know if it makes a big difference because there, there's a different configuration for a lot. 16 on the plan you have versus the plan that Randy is asking us to look at. Yeah, so I'll, I'll probably wait for that plan to be re I referenced the right plan in the release, right? And the other thing is on the draft uh, certificate releasing, uh, you probably want to rewrite it to not refer to a majority of the planning board. Yep. Okay. So I'll just leave one line with your signature. Yeah. And then I'll wait to get that updated plan from Randy, and then I'll contact you after that. Okay. Well, I don't know if you can, re can you record plans right now at the Registry of Deeds? I'll have to double check. Uh, you can do it by mail. Uh, they're not letting anyone in the door. Okay. So the way to record a plan is by mail now. Okay. Which right. I found out about last week, the day before they closed. Oh, man. I had a plan that had to be recorded. So did you get it recorded before the meeting? I get it recorded because okay. they were still open, but uh, uh, they had me sit on the other side of the room. Oh, wow. So, yep. um, but uh, they, they did say they are going to continue accepting mail deliveries. And, oh, good. Okay. But, uh, 
but nothing like I can't file a plan electronically. Okay, perfect. All right. So there will also be, there's a letter that goes with those votes for that first vote we took earlier that I will have to get around for everyone to sign, but okay. I'll connect with you all at some point on that. Okay. Wait, you can email it to me, I can sign and then email it back to you. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. We have to get plot, a majority of signatures on the piece of paper. To, uh, okay. So, um, not sure. I, I'll I'll figure something out on that. Okay. Even if I just mail it around to everybody. Okay. The uh, we did get a request from Valley Bike. They want to put up. That's the Valley Bike is the one the uh, bike shop that's uh, basically across from Walt Wine Six. The old uh, uh, Gorinowski building. Where you know what I'm talking about everybody. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they requested to the building, in fact, they want to put up another little storage building. I think it's 10 by 20, exactly like the one they put up about a year, a couple of years ago. They want to put up exact, right next to it for storage. And the building, in fact, said it was uh, no special permit required because it's, it's under the building code. And they asked the board of selectmen about it. And just for the, they said, well, just to be double check, let's check with the planning board. And I said, well, they're still under the 10% rule, even with it, we waived site plan approval for the first building. It's virtually invisible where they put it. So I said, it shouldn't be a problem, but I'll check with the rest of the board to make sure. I don't see a problem. I don't think we need to even do a waiver. Okay. Just, just for case in point, Jim, there's been a little creep there because uh, he's come in for two additions. Number one, he wanted to uh, fence in or and close the front part that was open that was not part of the building. That was one addition. And the other addition was this small building in the back. So that's number two. And this is going to be number three. Uh, there's a certain amount of creep here. And I think I'll, I'll be in favor of approving this one. But if he comes in again, we pro probably should get a more distinct uh, mapping of what has been taken away from parking, green space, et cetera, et cetera. I, I agree with that. I, I was thinking about the same thing myself. This would be the last one that we wait. If it comes in again, we need a much more detailed plan. Yep. Good. Okay. I'm in good shape if I'm thinking like you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> All right, okay. We then also have John McMillan. John yes. Um, can I, may I try to speak? Yep, you're up. Okay, thank you. Um, last week, uh, Carlos uh, from Berkshire, or, uh, Berkshire Design tried to send to Bill a copy of a annotated site plan with some changes that the uh, uh, fire substation committee would like to request review from the planning board, some uh, site uh, changes, some minor, some may consider more than just minor. Um, any chance that anyone has seen those plans? Yeah. Yeah, there was a sign, some sort of changes of signs. Yes. And okay. Okay. what the others were. Patty. So if you don't mind, I can take you through those changes so you can see what they're all about. So uh, initially, uh, if you can remember back, I think it was a year ago, um, at the very last minute, we added a driveway between the public parking lot and the apparatus driveway uh, on the plan there. And it allowed the fire trucks to come in off the entrance off Stockbridge and to come, uh, go directly to the apparatus apron and back into the apparatus without pulling out into the street or backing up in the street. That was a particular request of a former member. So that was done at the very last minute and we basically just got that out to bed right thereafter. Um, in reviewing the plans with the fire chief since then, he has uh, asked us to improve the lighting along that uh, part of the driveway. There wasn't it was basically just one light near the uh, front entrance of the building. Uh, on the site, on the plans you might be looking at, it's on the right-hand side closest to the um, 
fire station uh, apparatus uh, apron. Uh, we added a se uh, second light basically in line with the parking lot and a third light towards the entrance uh, where the entrance curls into the, um, into the building. We've sent photometrics of those, of those uh, light fixtures showing that they don't cast any more light on the street than uh, basically you have, than, you, than right now, uh, there is one existing street pole basically across from Stockbridge, which is your, your, your largest light source on the street basically. We're not improving upon that very much. Uh, the chief wanted that, uh, he considered that a, a, an issue of uh, improved safety. So uh, we're requesting the uh, approval to basically uh, install two more light fixtures in board of the, um, in board of the street uh, to improve uh, vehicle circulation. But, but the, uh, the lights are only necessary when you're driving the vehicles, correct? Yes. In particular at night. True. So is there some way you could rig them so that they only come on when they're necessary? The, there is a, um, we are attempting to have the lights come on at the tone of an alarm so that when someone is responding to the building, the lights would be on when they get there. Okay. Uh, that's, that's going to a control issue right now. But uh, right now they would be uh, the same as the existing lights, which I believe are probably time clock on, oh, sorry, photocell on, time clock off. And are those instant on, or do those take a while to come up to full? Uh, they're LEDs. Well, I don't think they should be on all night if they're not necessary. Uh, I don't think they're planning to go on much. There's no, no business in the fire station after like 7, 8 o'clock on some night, so they're not, they won't be on all night. Uh, they were going to be time clock off anyway, so even if they were on, there'd be time clock turning them off at 10, 11 o'clock or so. Okay. And then they're only going to be tur turned on if you get a siren that goes off? I don't know that right now because we're still trying to make that connection. I'm just concerned about the neighbors, in particular Mr. McCreskey right across the way there. Right, but there, there are two, one of the street lights, one of these three street lights is, uh, was existing to remain, you know, part of the original plan. So right. it was always lighting on this property. There was, uh, it goes down the side of the building and the back of the building. I think there's a total of, if I can count, one, two, three, four, four or five fixtures, some of them with double heads. So all these fixtures were reviewed and approved before at a particular, uh, control sequence, and it may have been off at nine or ten o'clock. I don't. Remember. We we just want to kind of control light pollution in North Hadley. You know, mm -hmm. we don't want a Chris. We don't want a Christmas tree there year round. At least I don't. Okay. Well, what's your pleasure? Uh, we have. We're adding. What can you do? What can you do about that issue of light pollution? We don't want it on all night long. At least I used to. I don't live in North Hadley any longer, but uh, we don't want to. We just. That's my opinion. What so time you, you got to tell me how to present. If we don't need the light all the time, why are they going to be turned on all the time? He's saying that they're going to go off on a clock, so it's not all night. It'll only be for a couple hours. And that, possibly, that's my, yeah, there is. I'd have to go back to review how we set it up with the planning board on the original review. But I do believe there was a time clock off, and I don't remember the time. But if you want to review that again with me and tell yeah, me what you would consider to be yeah, look at that, we don't we don't late. want the lights to be on, you know, at to eleven o'clock at night if they're not necessary. Okay. So you want um, the only time you like the lights to come on is when there is well they have advertised meetings they have um, uh, training sessions there. Uh, sure, that's they tend to. So there would be uh, business hours, I won't say business hours, but there'd be hours after five or maybe after sundown where they would have scheduled uh, training. Well, that's that's not going to happen, you know, 28, know. Days, 28 days a month, is it? No. <laughs> no. I, I do not know what the frequency of that is. You know, we've, we've, we've got the... Uh, 
North Athlete Garage that has a lot of lighting on there now. I don't think we realized that it was going to be that bright. And we certainly don't want this to become a trend in North Hadley. And, you know, okay. Um, we do think the lights want to be on when people are arriving for a meeting, though. Because sure, absolutely. Know. Absolutely. That's reasonable. Right. We just don't want the lights on if nobody's there. At least I don't. Okay. Well, I can review what the, um, as far as the lights themselves, if we can control them properly, can we continue to install them? And then the issue becomes controlled in hours and they're, they're left on, I guess, right? Yeah, whatever, if you control them properly means. Uh, well, from, if you want to tell us what your intent is, I, well, basically well, I don't, just. I, yeah, if, if, if nobody, if they're not necessary because no meetings are going to be, be, be taking place or no siren is going to, off, going, going to go off, having gone off, then I'm not sure that you need the lights on. Okay. So you're referring to basically occupied hours and if there's an alarm. Yeah. I mean, if you need something, a light on, were there these lights for security purposes? Um, not necessarily when you consider that they go off at 10 o'clock and there won't yeah. be any security after that. So yeah. they're really there for safety. Yeah. Well, I have no problem with safety. If nobody's there, then there's no safety issue. Mm-hmm. The, the only per the only, obviously the first person who arrives um, won't have the lights. That's the that's the only concern, and as and that's safety and probably security because they're arriving into a dark building. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there's a some a remote that people can have. To, sure. To turn on basic lights as they approach, if if you cannot get the. Um, did not get it, it automatically activated when an alarm goes off. Yeah, I, I, I think the alarm is probably the easier of the two. Um, I, what I'm trying to resolve is, so there's a reasonable measure so that when there's a scheduled meeting and it's, you know, one day a week or whatever it is, or that there's an opportunity for the lights to be on when the first person arrives. Yeah, well, you know, it's because you've got a street light right there too. It's not as it's going to be uh, midnight black when you show up. Uh, the street light won't be lighting up anything near the building. It only lights up the entrance to the driveway. As far as I can remember, the driveway is not pretty far, too far away from the building, is it? Uh, where that is right there, I bet we're probably talking about 150 feet. Really. I'm sure they can find some way to do with motion detectors when they drive in or something like that. Okay. Um, let me review this and we'll get back to you. Uh, we can discuss the other parts of this uh, request. You know, we're just, you know, remembering the site plan review for this and several neighbors, including Carla. Uh, Carla Kresge. Yeah, McCreskey was concerned about the visuals and, you know, I think we got around that, but if the thing is lit up like a Christmas tree at night, then the visual is not going to be able to be blocked out from her place. Well, from the from perspective of her house, these lights are on the opposite side of the building. Okay. But you got Mr. Mr. McCreskey on the other side, too. Yeah, understood. <laughs> and across the street. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You have this three of them right, right around a, all this, in a semicircle there. Okay. Well, I apologize. I don't recall the, the method of control that we agreed on at the last uh, for the plan. For the I'm not sure permit. we did because it was coming at us so quickly. But uh, since you brought this up, I think uh, it's under our purview to uh, make these requests now. Okay. I'll move that forward. Thank um, you. The other part of uh, a couple of the parts of this um, of the changes that have gone on since the uh, original permit was the uh, the sign location. It was a building sign, uh, North Alley Fire Substation. It was a ground based sign. It had a couple of lights on either side of it. It was perpendicular to the road, and it was basically almost in front of the main entrance of the building. 
in that area right now, there's uh, a light pole, there's a uh, sewer pipe vent that comes up, looks like a little candy cane. And that area, and there's a light, a, a light pole of ours and a telephone pole in the street. And it was a congested area. And we wanted to move the sign about 90 feet to the south uh, to get to an area where it's just as visible. Um, and it also is closer to the main public entrance because in being in front of the building, it was closer to the uh, fire truck apron. And we didn't want anybody coming in that way. So we would like to move the sign about 90 feet to the south. And if you have the plan or can recall the plan that we sent last week, uh, it's, it's located on that plan. It's the same sign, same lighting, it's just moved uh, 90 feet directly to the south. It's no more closer to the property line or the street than it was before. I don't see a problem with that. He speak, he, Jim speaks for me too. I think it's a good idea. All set? Okay. Yep, all set. Okay, thank you. Um, there were a couple of signs that the fire chief asked uh, to be added to the project. Uh, typically, try to keep the public from going, driving down the driveway towards the fire truck apron. So there's a sign there that it's authorized vehicles only. There's a sign that he wants to put on the building so that nobody if they were going to park in front of the apparatus bay doors that basically says no parking fire lane and um, keeping people from driving the wrong way down that, uh, that short driveway in front of the building between the uh, two entrances. Uh, there's three signs. I think they're shown in the plan. And these are, you know, typically, what, five feet tall or so, five and a half feet tall, just for orientation of traffic. Yeah, but they're small. They're small signs, correct? The actual. Oh signs. yeah, they're yeah, tw uh, eighteen by twenty-four, twelve by eighteen. Yeah, they're, they're basically directional signs. Yes, sir. But but as you said, the uh, driveway is short, and by the time you see the sign saying you can't go this way, you're already going this way. No, that's why we're kind of hoping they go the other way. We don't want to put a sign near the street. That's we weren't trying to go that far. Sounds, looks fine to me. Okay, fine for me. All right. Um, in the back of the building, uh, a couple of minor changes. In an area around some condenser units and a separate area around the generator, uh, you, the previous drawings called for that area to be seated. Uh, just because of the maintenance problems, and there's piping in there that we don't want a weed whacker to hit, uh, he chose to change that from grass to stone. If that's acceptable. Change it to, what was that again? Change that, change an area of uh, grass around some mechanical units and generator to uh, round stone so that it keeps the weeds out and they don't have to go in there and try to maintain it. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's putting peace stone at the back where no one's going to see it. I think that's not a problem. Yeah, I think it's an inch and a half, but um, it's obviously meant to uh, keep the growth down. Five years, we, they'll be putting something down to, get, to keep the weeds out of the stones. Again, yeah. Well, there's lots of pesticides out there, you know, and maybe there's something. <laughs> uh, the other um, part of the, in the rear of the building was they uh, wanted to add a, we had a uh, concrete sidewalk. They wanted to change that to a brick paver and enlarge it a little bit so they'd have room for a small picnic table and maybe a gas grill um, if the weather's nice. What's the reason for the gas grill? I thought this was going to be a spare station, not an occupied station. Uh, it may be occupied at times. They so they're going to have so much they want to move out of the old one. Well, <laughs> Bill, how do we interpret this, or Jim, uh, call it the echelon uh, patio? Uh, and Jim was correct. There was supposed to be, there was an argument about, well, we, we don't want to put something having to do with uh, a sewer separator or something in the kitchen, a grease right. trap, that's what it was. Right. And uh, they said, there's going to be no cooking there, no. So. Uh, it 
it, do we have to, res this is not going to have anything to do with parking, but it's just an idea to make everybody aware that uh, it's uh, creep a little bit about the size of the building and uh, changing the outlook. How, uh, when you say changing the size of the building, you're not talking about the square foot of the building, right? The, the building square footage isn't changing. No, I think he means the square foot of the impact on the site because you're you've got more paved. It's kind okay. of like we've seen with other clients. Okay, sorry. Yeah, uh, I think there's probably a total of less than 100 square feet of extra space, but or extra pavement. It's no big deal here, but uh, just wanted to point it out. So, whose idea was it to put a barbecue out there? It's just a possibility right now. There's a barbecue in the back of the existing main station. I don't know how often they use it. It doesn't look like they use it too often. Well, the main station is designed to be an occupied station. That's a bit different. You know, there's a lot more people there. I can see him, I can see him cooking their lunch or hot dogs and hamburgers out there or something, but this is supposed to be just a, an auxiliary station unoccupied was the, was the original presentation to the town. I don't, you know, I don't think, think it's a big deal, but it's just, it's a change that people aren't different. It's different. Yeah, so who's gonna, is somebody gonna authorize somebody to go there and have a barbecue? Or can anybody do it? Is it? Oh, <laughs> I don't know the workings of the fire department that way. Well, it's town property. Can anybody go there and barbecue? I would think not. I would think they Why? weren't that supervised only because they're talking about gas and gas and being an explosive issue. I mean, if the barbecue is something that you don't want. You're, you're, turn, you're turning it into a public picnic area. That's what you're doing. Well, I don't know about that, Mike. That's a little bit stretch. <laughs> I can see them. I can see them throwing a in-house party there when the baseball field's in use and their parking lots all. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah, well, let, let, let's wrap. So, it is, so, so, in other words, it is an outdoor picnic area. Let, let's ask: How big of a barbecue are we talking about that you're proposing? I mean, other than the sidewalk, this is less than a hundred square feet. I mean, it's. No. How, how big of a barbecue? Oh, we're talking about a, a gas grill you buy at Home Depot. Okay. Just, yeah, just a portable one. This, they have the portable one at the uh, main station. Okay. Is that in the fire station budget or was it budgeted in this uh, project? There's no uh, budget for a. Um, yeah. uh, tell, uh, tell Mr. Spanky it's got to be fire code. Yeah, okay, we can get that by. <laughs> Okay, I don't. I don't see a problem with 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 a grill. Okay. I don't. Okay. I think that was. I think that was it. I think I just need to circle back with you on the control of the lights. Okay. We need any kind of motion for that, Bill, or? Well, um, I think it wouldn't hurt to uh, just approve. Uh, uh, to approve the signage in the uh, landscaping. Okay. Uh, so I'll make a motion to approve uh, signage and landscaping changes. Second. Are those, cha John? Yes. Are those changes on a plan? Yeah, they're on the plan that um, hopefully uh, Bill got on a Friday. Okay. So signage and change and then. And uh, landscaping for the plan, right? Good, fine. Could could we agree on the additional light locations? Would that be possible? Oh, and the light changes. Light locations, yeah. Additional lights. Yes, please. Okay, and like uh, I can't approve them unless I know that they're going to be controlled. You want to say contingent on approval of the lighting control? We, we, once you do that, you lose control. I'll tell you, they're okay. gonna come in and the control's not gonna happen. What we'll approve the two, the, the uh, part, the uh, signage and the, and the and landscaping changes, and they just come back to us how they're opposed to control the, the uh, lighting. 
How's that, John? Um, sure. Uh, your next meeting, are you meeting two weeks or four weeks? Should be, I believe it's going to be in two weeks, Bill. No, uh, it will be in, well, we have a meeting scheduled in two weeks. Okay, okay. great. It'll okay. probably be just like this. Okay. Yeah, I'll certainly come back to you with all the information. Okay. Thanks, John. Okay, excellent. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Do you want to do a roll call just for those? Yeah, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Mr. Sarzinski? Aye. Uh, Mr. Zagradnik? Aye. Mr. Dunn? Aye. Mr. Dwyer? Aye. And just for the record, just for the record, I like my hamburgers cooked medium. <laughs> okay, we got that. Motion approved unanimously. Jim, thank I you very much. I didn't want to muddy the waters when Mike was talking about the lighting, but he was making a point that I noted as being lighting is being exaggerated on many buildings. Number one, the North Hadley Garage. I don't remember those lights all over the place being proposed. Number two. Texas Roadhouse, you go by there now, they put more lighting on all the cupolas and all the, uh, the roof outlines. Uh, and number three is uh, One Mill Valley Lane. Uh, there seems to be a lot more lighting on the building just shining over it. Uh, it seems to be, open. so the next building that comes in, I think we should probably examine it a little bit more closely. Well, you know, we've got a new zoning enforcement officer in town, and if we think uh, somebody's in violation of the site plan, maybe we should point it out to Mr. Quinlan. Well, I, I think, number one, we've, we've got to be more aware when we approve a site plan in that we do question the lighting and where it's going to be located a little bit more closely. Yeah. Just for the record, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Tom Quinlan Jr. on being appointed the new building inspector. So we did have a couple of other people who uh, popped in. They have uh, they have dropped out now. Yeah. I'm sorry, I had problems with connectivity, and I was late to join you. You didn't miss one. We assigned you all kinds of things to do, Mark. Build a build, 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 build. Right. But you did get your uh, background set up. I found yeah, that. That's very impressive. I wouldn't, wouldn't, mine wouldn't set up. It told me I needed a solid color background when I tried to put that your, uh -huh. your uh, backdrop in. Uh -huh. I've got to crop it down. You can hardly. Well, I guess you can see the text at the top, but it's so small. Yeah. Yeah, and mine said that I needed a uh, more powerful system to operate without a green screen. <laughs> um, so um, we have um, nothing new. I'm looking through the agenda. Nothing new on Megan's way. We probably uh, beat the Affordable Housing Trust Fund uh, to death for now. With when we get closer to a town meeting, we can uh, uh, refresh our memory on that. Uh, I think I circulated the, the link for the final FEMA discovery report. Um, this was not the exercise that rewrote the FEMA maps. This was just their report on the comments that they got. Uh, planning board procedures, we already took up the uh, Section 81P uh, signal signature. Um, I don't know if there are any bills. Jim, I have not been going into town hall. I was in there, I think it was last Thursday or so, and there was nothing in there. There were no invoices in the, in the mailbox. Okay. Um, we all get paid for the first quarter. At least my wife tells me it was a, it was direct deposited the other day, and uh, because I haven't put anything we haven't put anything into the Gazette, the last invoice that was we had we I believe we paid. Let me verify that because that was uh, the one for Mr. Michelson public hearing that we put off, continued, and we do not have any other invoices that I'm aware of. Uh, no, I don't have anything. So I do understand in discussion with uh, the Board of Health that they have rescinded their approval of the septic system for right. the accessory apartment. Uh, for home? For home? Mr. Michelson? 
Evidently, the person that inspected it, his license had uh, expired to, uh -huh. do, to do such a thing. So uh, they, as I announced, Mr. Michelson had requested a continuation to our second meeting in May. Um, we'll see if he comes up with anything, if, if he can obtain a new certification by then, satisfy the Board of Health. Yeah. That's what he asked. He has to satisfy the Board of Health on that one. It's outside our jurisdiction. And I think that is everything. Just, Bill, there's one point. You came around uh, to get signatures regarding a uh, uh, oh, frontage uh, across the uh, other than the frontage. Uh, no, no, what I came around for was to get signatures on the very small subdivision that we had previously approved for um, oh, Mr. Gelinas oh, uh, on, um, on Middle Street. I think it's-, I think it's Okay, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Now, they want frontage other than that, across the front yard. That is, that's a, a new matter. Yeah, that, that's a special permit. Okay, so I, I was just questioning. So what, what we signed last week was just tidying up the um, very small subdivision that we had approved uh, almost two years ago. And that we just getting the plan finalized and recorded at the registry. Um, the proposal that uh, Randy Iser circulated to us the uh, last couple of days uh, it was a request by a potential purchaser of that very small subdivision building lot to put a driveway across someone else's property. Uh, that's not before us. That wasn't before us. So okay, that was my question. Are we going to schedule the the special permit hearing? But we're not. They haven't, they haven't applied or anything. Yet. And when they do apply. I'm not sure they can apply for that under the under the zoning bylaw. That's not a permitted use. The way we worded the very small subdivision might make it difficult for that to happen. Well, not only that, Section Five that allows access to cross other than frontage, they don't satisfy that portion of the bylaw. So that bylaw seems to be specific to owning the frontage on the uh, side or rear, rear lot, they don't own the access line. But it, I'm going to wait and see when they come in and what they propose. Okay. Another yeah, good point. So if and when they come in, we can discuss it further. OK. So I, I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Oh, just as, a, as a, we may be scheduling, they, because they postponed the town meeting as well as the town election, um, the town meeting has been postponed to a date to be determined. Not so May 12th? Pardon? Wasn't it changed to what, May 12th? And then it's so it's to be determined later? Okay. The vote has been, the town, the town election has been moved to, I think, May 12th. Okay. At last week, I think last week they they're putting off town meeting at a date to be determined. So um, hopefully, I was going to schedule a public hearing on the zoning articles, but chances are, if I schedule for the first Tuesday in May, we're not going to be able to publicly meet. So it's going to be a waste of paper. So I'm going to get a hold of David Dixon and try to find out. You know, once you find out when the date will be. Give us a month's notice so that we can schedule a public hearing on the zoning amendments so that we're not wasting yeah. good point. Wasting paper. Yeah. That's all. Because public we, we can do meetings like this, but when you come to a public hearing, there's really no good way to hold a public hearing because looking for comments, you know, what do you do? Hold it outside? You know, I talked to Bill about that. He raised a couple of points. How do you, you know, we could hold an outside meeting. And stay six feet apart, but then how do you hear people? So, you know, that's that's a tough one. 
Yeah, uh, the select board was able to conduct a public hearing via Zoom, but in as it happened, there were no objections. So it was just a matter of having the applicant call in, um, having, I can see we might be able to manage some people, but having a room full of people wanting to comment would have us down to really, truly postage stamps um, on Zoom. Um, might be doable. Uh, I know the next thing that we have potentially coming up is the continuation of Esalon. Um, at the request of the applicant, I continued that to two weeks from now. I think it's a practical matter. We're probably going to have to continue that again. Uh, Tom Reedy was hopeful that this would all be past us, but I don't think that's going to happen on that time scale. Yeah, even the governor has continued his uh, full quarantine till the end of April. So that, that by itself will take care of that. So uh, Copelman and Page did send around a, uh, a couple of memos about uh, some changes the governor has made. Um, I think I forwarded those to everyone. The, what had been an open issue was that um, we're under certain time constraints that we have to hold a public hearing within X number of days of an application, render a decision in a certain period of time after that. And uh, none of that had been addressed, but it has been now. So every, every deadline has been extended to 45 days after the end of the declaration of emergency. But you have that to look through if you want to pour over that. That's the one that I was happy to see. And there'll be various changes in delays in tax due dates and so on. So a lot of pieces in motion here. So in the time I missed, did we did I hear we did not touch on Crystal Lane? Has that been continued? Uh, no, we did. Um, we approved the release of the lot, but Randy did not come in and did not sign in requesting the change to the. Uh, whatever he wanted to do. Oh, uh, so, so we released lot 16, but then we haven't addressed that issue about recreating those other parcels where he has some concern about street frontage? Correct. Yes. Okay. And uh, did we touch on the valley bike and ski work shed? Yes. Yes. Okay. We said that was okay. That was okay? Oh, okay. And. Mm -hmm. We also <laughs> took up the um, uh, 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 designating single signers uh, under the subdivision control law, <clears throat> those to be either Joe or Jim or me. Uh, after, we, after we all vote to approve it. Based on a, an sure, right. vote. So not just a matter of convenience so that we don't have to have too many people interacting to it wrap. saves you having to go to every house right yeah and uh, we also voted to uh, <clears throat> delegate uh one either the chairman or the clerk that's jim or me uh to sign approved bills and submit them for payment uh after after a majority vote Okay. I was watching the selectmen when they uh, interviewed the two candidates on the second. I was watching that on YouTube. And it was interesting, you know, as we all kind of navigate this new forum, they would seem to voice vote and it didn't seem like a clear. So you did a roll call vote, which is fine. The other thing I thought was if we did, you know, visual thumbs up or thumbs down, that's another way that you could also, but I think with five people, it's probably easy enough to just do roll call. Yeah, Jennifer suggested we do a roll call vote. I think for that 
in these circumstances, that's probably the best way we can do it because it is clear. Yeah. Now, there is a way. Um, it's over on the uh, managed participants page, which I guess I have and you don't have, but oh, the uh, chat. Yeah, there is a way to, um, well, there's something else that these, the participants, it's sort of in the middle of your lower panel. Yeah. We invite and share screen. And there is something that allows me to do an up or down. It just says yes or no. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there's a yes or a no as well. But I guess I can just do it for myself. So it is a way to take a poll. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah. I don't know if, does everyone have that on their screen? The yes or no, yeah. 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 So now I've checked a yes. So and Mark. And I can raise my hand. <laughs> You can raise your hand. I, I I am the host, so I can't uh, raise my hand. Yeah. I can I can see who is raising their hand. Yeah. Um, are you also able to let us share screen? Uh, we tried that before the meeting started, and yeah. it was um, unsuccessful. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can uh, I can bring a and it may be a factor of the fact that I'm working off of uh, my uh, my MacBook. Okay. That, uh, there's not a lot of screen space to share. Right. Uh, I tried to bring up a document that I had uh, set aside for the meeting. Right. It, actually, it was the statute, the Section eighty one P. Which is sort of fine print, but uh, Jim wasn't able to make it out at all. Yeah. So, uh, so I have the capacity, but it's not actually doing us much. Yeah. I so, just, if I were to, oh, I'm sorry, Jim, go ahead. I just tried sharing a screen, and it says host has disabled participant screen sharing. That's what I was. I was wondering that if we try to share. Do you, as the co-host, do you even see that and have the option to accept it? Like if Jim's trying to share his now? I believe I do, but I don't think I can do it from this panel. Uh, um, I think I have to go to the Zoom website oh. and um, system level changes. Uh. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Jennifer was here before the meeting started and enabled, you know, designated me as the, um, that's, yeah, there's someone, um, uh, I think I have the, in turn, I have the capacity to designate someone else as, um, um, to replace me if I had to leave, but uh, I don't see, let's see, advanced sharing. Um, uh, yes, I do have, okay, I do have a capacity to say uh, uh, who can share. So I'm just gonna flip that. Jim, are you, do you have something you can try to share? Yeah, just let me, let me pull it up here before you do that. I don't know if there's any interest, but maybe um, offline, like maybe next t Tuesday night, we could have a practice meeting just amongst ourselves in Zoom to try to practice sharing and all that. Okay. So right now I've enabled sharing for everyone. Okay. Because I've got the fire plan, I've got the firehouse plan up now. I could share that, but if Jim's got something coming, I'll wait. We had a um, we had a Zoom meeting for work that was up over 20 people. I had another Zoom with UMass IT on training on Zoom. And that was, we had 
over 200 people on it. So there were actually pages of what looked like the Hollywood squares. <laughs> and you could scroll through the pages. All right. Oh. Okay. Can you see? What is brought up? Yep. Yep. It is your files? Yeah. Now, did you want to double click on any of those just to open okay, up? Now that I've got, yeah, everybody can see it but me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the problem I ran into. Um, the. The first time I shared screen, I then couldn't find how to unshare it. You have to you have to drag your cursor around the at the top of my screen. I've got very top of my screen where I don't show everybody. I've got a yellow square that says your screen sharing is paused. Wait a minute. Resume, resume share. And then a little red box that says stop share. Yeah. Yeah, so you click on the red when you want to stop sharing. So I apparently have the capacity to stop you from sharing too, which would be useful if someone, but but so far we're not seeing any documents from you, just the list of documents. Okay, no, I tried to, all right. Yeah, so when you click share, um, screen, it should then give you a choice of screen, different windows open, and you can pick one, and then it'll say share screen at the bottom right, and you click that. Yeah, we need, we need some, we definitely need more uh, practice, more, more practice on this, yes, because I'm going to practice stopping your sharing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and let's see what Mark can bring up. Okay, All so right. if you stop my sharing, I went back to normal. Okay. So are you seeing the fire station yet? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I can move it around for right. you. And, yeah. And I can say, here's his fire pit and the pea gravel. And I think this was his light and his sign. So, you know, so something like this, you know, let's say um, uh, Randy comes in or, or, or the Berkiums, we could put that up and whoever's talking about it, you know, you might, it might not be our choice to have the presenter um, be in control of our screens, but maybe one of us puts it up. And well, that's my, the idea was that um, what, what I tried to set up was a, um, let me see if I can do it. Um, so that was, well, that was what I tried to share. And well, that's about perfect now, Bill. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right. So what I did was create a folder. So if I am the only one who is going to be sharing, um, I set up a folder. Um, so I'm going to put it back to only host. Um, I set up a folder with all the documents that I had come in the, and that I had forwarded to the board. And um, so I could go in and reach it. And I, I don't know why it worked well that time. It didn't work well the last time. Um, so that was where I... There, there. You, okay. Maybe you didn't click to open. Now it's back to the screen you had when you were, we were before the meeting started. Okay. All right, so all right, so it's one more step. Yeah. So this was the revised plan that Randy uh, sent over, but did not come to talk about. Right. Okay. And then. Okay. Well, this will. And right. then the other thing, as the host or co-host, you have the option to record these. Now, is that something that you're doing, or is that something that John is doing as yeah, heavy media? Heavy media is doing it, so I'm not doing it separately.
or to the cloud from Zoom, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to know if Joe is in California or maybe he's outside the North Hadley uh, fire station because it definitely looks brighter outside his windows than it does outside mine. Joe's about 10 feet away from Mike. <laughs> yeah, I've been quiet. Well, I was chirping before you came in, so I have to take up some of your airspace, Mark. <laughs> please do, please do. Okay, I have nothing else either. All right. Well, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you. And thank you, John. Hey. Good night. Night. All right. I'm going to hit end meeting.